Welcome guys, welcome to the second video. So this is a continuation from the first one. In the first video, we created a basic music player where you can go select a song and send that information from your main process to your renderer process and play the song. So in the second video, we are going to take this app and we are going to add more functionalities to it. You can go, you can select a folder now. So that folder becomes your playlist and you can, so, you can sort of play any song from that particular folder and uh, you, can, you can move from, the, from a particular song to the next one or to the previous one, have some cool visual animations of, of a Siri wave sort of a feature. And you can then move from one part of the song to the next part, which is something I call a seek to functionality. So yeah, let's just get down to this. Uh, so before, uh, so to, to get it up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a player object. So we will be creating the player object in uh, the player.js that we have created. Uh, so yeah, let's just where player is equal to function. And uh, this dot playlist is what we are going to pass. This dot index is equal to zero. Let's initialize it to zero. And uh, let's just add some properties to this player dot prototype. So we are going to pass an index to this. And here we are going to say where self equal to this. And we are going to initialize a sound object, which is, is equal to null. So uh, I'm going to check the index that I've passed is type of index. Number. If it is true, then I'm going to say index or I'm going to say self dot index. And then I'm going to go and define the data object, which is, is equal to self dot playlist of the index. Then I'm going to go and define dollar scope dot track name is equal to data dot name. So let's just go and uh, initialize the track name object, oops, oh, which I've already done. So dollar scope dot track name is equal to null. And so I'm going to check if the data dot howl object is already available. If it is, then I'm going to define, I'm going to initialize it with the, to the sound object. Else, I'm going to say sound is equal to data of howl is equal to a new howler object, where I'm going to say the source is equal to the playlist or the data dot dot file and let's just say HTML5 is equal to true. Okay. Now uh, once once this is done, I'm just going to say sound dot play. And I'm going to text is equal to index. So once my play object is defined, let's just go and define the pause function then. It's going to do the same thing here and I'm just going to go and say where sound is equal to self dot playlist of index dot howl. And I'm just going to say sound dot pause. Once I've defined the pause object, I'm going to define the skip function. So uh, what skip function does is it takes in a direction and 
it takes in a direction, say to the next direction or the previous direction, which means it's going to uh, figure out if I want to go to the next song in the playlist or the previous song in the playlist. And what I'm going to do is same where self is equal to this, where index is equal to zero. If direction is equal to prev, where I want to go to the previous song, then I'm going index is equal to self dot index minus one. If index is less than zero, if index is less than zero, then index is equal to self dot playlist dot length minus one. So what I've done here guys is I'm checking if if I've already reached to the first song of my playlist and I want to do the previous song. So I need to go to the last song of the playlist and have a circular sort of a playlist available. I'm going to do an else here and I'm going to do an index. I can copy it from here then and just say a plus one. I'm going to do a same sort of a check here again. Index is greater than or equal to self dot playlist dot length. And I'm then going to define it to zero. So if I have reached to the last of the playlist, then I'm just going to the first song of the playlist. And I'm just going to say, once I have done this, then I'm just going to say well, skip to to the index. Let's go and define the skip to function then. And it takes in the index. And uh, same where self is equal to this. If self dot playlist of the index dot howl, which means if I already have an howler object for the particular song that I've set, then I'm just going to say self this, this, this dot stop. Okay. Once this is done, then I'm just going to say self dot play the index. So what, I, what I'm doing now guys is I'm in, in my skip to function, I'm checking whether this object that the, the previous song was already playing or not. If it was playing, I've stopped it. And now I'm playing the index or the song that I've passed the index for. Then I'm going to, okay, I need to, skip to our, then I'm going to say seek function and I'm going to pass the time. So again where, oops, sorry, where self is equal to this, where sound is equal to self dot playlist of self dot index dot hall if sound dot playing then I just go and do a sound dot seek to a sound dot duration into the time that I've passed. Yep. That's it. Uh, so we have created the, the major backbone of your application now, guys. We have created the object, the player object, that's going to take care of your next, previous, to the time that you want to move to. And let's just run it and see if we are up, if we have any errors. No, we don't have any errors, and that's, that's a great thing. Now we have created the player object here, and now we just need to change the file selection 
to a folder selection, which we are going to do in the main process. So we read through the content of the folder that we select and figure out all the MP3 files and create an array of, of songs, which is going to be a playlist. So let's just get started with it then. Uh, so in your main.js, we change your open file to an open directory. And uh, once, once, I have, once I've selected the file path, once I've got the file path, I'm just going to do fs dot read dir file path of zero and function error and say files. Okay, now when I've done this, I'm going to create an empty array and I'm going to iterate over all the files that I have where i is equal to zero, i is less than files dot dot length, i plus plus. Once, uh, then I'm going to check if my files of i dot substring of minus four is triple equal to dot mp3. So what I'm doing here, guys, I'm, I'm iterating over all the files and I'm checking if it's a dot mp3 file. And if it is, then I'm just going to push that particular file to the array that I've created. Once I've done this, I'm just going to say where obj to send is equal to an object. Now obj to send dot files is equal to array and obj to send dot path is equal to file path of zero. And here I'm going to send it to my renderer process. So now I'm sending the, sending the file that I've selected to my renderer process. I don't need this anymore. And let me just do one thing. Before I do that, let me just do a console.log of the array that I've created. Now in my renderer process, I am going to take this particular file in my IPC module. I'm going to take this particular file. And uh, yeah, once I've got this, then I'm going to say uh, $scope dot song list is equal to null Oops, is equal to null is equal to the argument and uh, I'm going to say where songs so now let's just go ahead and create an array for the songs that we are going to play. And we are going to say, call it songs, songs array for playing. So we'll do a blank array. Once I've done this, I'm going to iterate over all the files that I've got. So go to zero, i is less than, less than song list dot length and I'm going to do this and here I'm going to do song array for playing dot push and add some properties to this object. I'm going to say title which is argument dot path plus plus dollar scope dot song scope.song, yeah, dollar scope dot song list of i. Okay, I'm going to use the same thing for my file property and I'm going to define a howl object which is going to be null for now and I'm going to have the name for it. The name is the name is going to 
be just this. Okay. Now when I've done this, I'm just going to say dollar scope dot player is equal to new player and I'm going to pass the array that I've just created. How cool is that? Right? Now in my play music function, I'm just going to say dollar scope dot player dot play. So now let's just go ahead and run the app and see whether the song plays. So we now have, let me remove the debuggers. And when I go and do a select song, it opens up a folder for me. I can go ahead and select this folder. It creates the playlist for me. And when I do, so it, it goes ahead and plays the first song in the playlist. And yep. So, so you have done the heavy lifting of your app, guys. You have created a player object which takes in a playlist and starts playing from the playlist. It, at right this point, it's just taking the first song and it's, and it's playing that for you, but we can do more. Let's just uh, go ahead and add much more functionalities to this. Now let's go ahead and give in a, uh, you know, a, a pause button, a next and a previous button and see how those work. So yeah, let's just uh, go ahead to my player.js. I'm going to define another object. So the song playing is equal to false. Inside my uh, prototype function of the player, if this particular song is getting played, so I'm going to say on play, I'm going to dollar scope dot timer is equal to self dot format time and I'm going to say math dot round of sound dot duration. Okay. Now when this is done, then I'm going to request animation frame and I'm going to say self dot step dot bind of self. Once this is done, then I'm just, because uh, again, it's, it's sort of an asynchronous thing, so we might have to load the digest cycle and once this is done then on an end you just say self dot skip and give them the direction. Once this is done let me just create this format time function that we had that we are creating here, right? Format time. And it takes in the time in seconds. As you can see, I'm passing the whole duration of that particular song and I'm rounding it off. I'm going to say where minutes is equal to math dot floor seconds by 60 or 0 where seconds is equal to sex minus minutes into 60 0 minutes plus seconds is less than 10. If it is that, then I'm going to pass 0 or I'm going to pass nothing. A 
Okay. Now, this when format time is done, I am going to add a step function to this. Then I'm going to say progress dot style dot. So we haven't defined the progress element on the DOM yet, guys. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say seek by sound dot duration into 100. Yeah. Okay. Or I've got zero. Let me add it here. Zero plus percentage. Let me see. So seek by sound or duration. Uh, if I do it here, I'll need to add another. Yeah, this should be good. We should be good. And then I'm going to check if my sound is playing or not. Sound dot playing. If that's true, then I'm going to say request animation frame. Request animation frame. I'm going to self dot bind. Oh, self dot step dot bind. That's it. Now, when uh, we remember we created the play song function, uh, play music function. Yeah. So, I am going to check here if my music is getting played or not. And I am going to do it here if if this is true, then make it false. It is nothing, it is just a um, uh, sort of a toggling function functionality pause and then we have else true that's correct and uh, now what i'm going to do is in my player.html i'm going to change the DOM a little bit so that I can show the play and pause button as as and when the songs are getting played. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say a div id is equal to loading. We'll come to that. And I'm just going to use this and um, these button defaults and all of it because I'm going to define an ID here and it's called play btn and ng show I don't need ng show I'm I'm going to change it to uh, song playing so this is only going to be shown when my song is not playing similarly I have a pause button it's called pause button and it shows up I don't need this I don't need this right and what I'm going to show is once my okay back site I'm going to sort of define a few controller classes here div class is equal to controls outer
Controls inner, nice. Outside my controls, I'm going to define a sort of a bar. Div ID is equal to bar. And you hide it when the song is playing. And div ID progress. Let's just go and fire this up now. Yeah, so if you, if you see very closely here guys, as and when the song progresses, there is a progress that is happening on the screen. So this is what I mean by the progress bar. And later on, we are going to add more functionalities to it, where I'm going to give you a seek to option where you can go ahead and click anywhere in the progress and the song will automatically get to that particular place. So we have added the play and pause button, guys. We have added a little bit more uh, objects to the, to the screen. Uh, we, are, we are going to show the progress bar. So let's just go ahead and see whether the application shows up or not. We don't need this. You go ahead, you select a particular folder, and when I say play, yeah, the song plays. Now, if you, if you look closely to this, guys, let me do this. If you look closely to this, you'll see that there is a slight progression that is happening on the page. That's what I mean when I say the progress bar. And uh, so later on, we are going to add more functionalities to this where you can go ahead and click anywhere in the progress bar and the song is going to move into that particular location. And let's just get that to that then. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's start adding some, uh, some titles. Let's show what song I'm playing and let's show what is the start and the end time for the, tit for the song. I'm going to call it a div ID is equal to title, okay? And let's do this. I'm going to add a span ID is equal to track and I'm going to say track name and I'm going to use a div ID is equal to equal timer and I'm just going to go and initialize it with 0, 0 for now and I'm going to say div ID is equal to duration I'm going to say timer okay uh, once I've done this, I need to add the next and the previous button, guys. I'm going to use this. It's going to be called the pref button. And it doesn't need any ng shows or something. Let's just show it all the time. And on click of this, I'm going to call the pref song function. I'm going to create the same thing for uh, the next button I'm going to call the next song function. Once I've done this, I've got to go and just create another but div okay div and give it a class called button uh, then id is equal to playlist button on click of this I'm going to say show playlist okay so what what happens here is I'm going to show a playlist icon 
on click of that, I'm going to show the, all the songs that you had selected and you can so that you can go ahead and play the, the song that you want. I've got the hide, uh, uh, I've got the bar, I've got the progress. I need to create the waveform. So I'm going to create a waveform, div id is equal to waveform and do an ng show. It's only going to be sh shown when your song is being played. Right, and ng click. I'm going to call a function called seek to time. Seek to time, and I'm going to pass the event. All right, I've got the progress. Uh, now I need to create the playlist. So div id is equal to playlist and you only show it when the playlist is visible. Inside this div, I'm going to create a div id to list and a div class is equal to list song and repeat over song in player dot playlist player dot playlist and when I click on it we'll take it to the next line when I click on it I wanted to call this particular function play playlist song and I want to pass the index okay I think it's okay now let's uh, playlist visible. Now let's go back to our player.js and uh, playlist visible is false. Now I'm going to create a function called show playlist dollar scope dot let's see I don't want to misspell it. Uh, show playlist if playlist is same thing if playlist is visible then you make it false else is equal to true. Once I've done this, now inside my IPC, when I'm getting the when I'm getting the files, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and I need to create the waveform, which I'm I'm using uh, Siri. Uh, it, there there's a there's a library called Siri waveform, which I need to go ahead and include in my application, which I'm going to do it right now. It says angular Siri wave and Siri wave.js. Now inside my player.js, once I've received the files or the folder, uh, selection of the folder, I'm going to go ahead and initialize the, the Siri wave object. I'm going to say new Siri wave add some properties to it. I'm going to say which container this is. It's going to be, co it's called, I guess it's called, yeah, it's called waveform. Then I'm going to give the width of, of, the, of the container, of the whole window. And I'm going to say window dot inner width 
height, I am going to give one third of the height. I am going to say cover is true, then speed is 0 0.03. Amplitude, yep, is 0 0.7, and two. Once this is done, I'm just going to say scope dot wave. So let me just go ahead and define this first. So let's let's go ahead and just fire this application up and see if our waveform is getting created whenever I go ahead and select a particular file. So if you see, I go ahead, I select a particular folder. Yep, and whenever I play the song, I get this awesome Siri wave sort of an animation, and I can go ahead and I can yeah yeah so. We, we can we can pause the song whichever ways you want and uh, now let's go ahead and add the rest of the functionalities that are needed into this. So what we are going to do next is we are going to give the seek to functionality where you can just move in from any part. So wherever you click on the Siri wave, it identifies the particular part of the song and moves into that. So yep, let's just go ahead and finish that up. So we are going to say dollar scope. dot seek to time so we take the event once this is there then I'm going to use the dollar scope dot player dot seek I'm going to call the seek function and dollar event dot client x by window dot inner width and yeah this should this should uh, create you know take your song from that particular place to the to the area which you have clicked and I'm going to uh, also create the playlist option where you have or where you can go and see the playlist and whichever song you select on the playlist gets played uh, by the by the player so I'm going to use the uh, yeah play playlist song function scope dot play playlist song function function and I'm going to use the index that I've passed and once I do this then I'm going to say dollar scope dot player dot play that particular index pretty cool right and then let's just add the next and the previous functionality, say previous song. I'm going to use the same player object and I'm going to say skip and I'm going to say prep, right? And I'm going to say dollar scope dot song playing is equal to true. Same thing I am going to do for the next song. So before we start it off, let us just see the player object once more and see if my skip function is going to take care of it. So it, it says that it looks at the direction and I need to pass the direction here, see, correct. So I have passing the direction here and this depending upon the direction that I pass, I am going to uh, move to the next song or the previous song. So let us just go ahead and run this up. Yeah, there is no error on this. 
good. I select the folder and when I'm playing this, first thing I want to check whether my C2 functionality works. Correct. So as you can see, wherever I go and select on the screen, wherever I go and select on the waveform, my, my song moves into that particular time. Now let's see if my next song works. Yeah, it does. My previous song. Yeah. Now let's see if the playlist. Oh, so the playlist isn't up. Okay. Now let's just fire up the application once and see if our playlist is working or not. And we go select a song and we play the song. Let's see. Oh. See, and our playlist is available to us. Now you can just move into whichever song you want. And uh, that's all guys. So the application is up guys, the playlist is working. We have shown you how to use the native menus of Electron. You can use the dialog buttons of Electron. We have added the playlist, we have added the waveform functionality, the seek to functionality. I would really like you guys to take this up package it using Electron Packager and send it across to your friends, see how they react, okay? And so this is, we are coming to the end of this video. If you like the video, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button. There's going to be an awesome more addition to this. And thanks a lot for being here. See you soon.